I like that, you know what I mean? Because the anticipation for some guests should be like that, especially with who we have joining us here for the first time ever, I do believe. A man that both AJ, myself, the boys have admired from afar. A man that I wish I got to share a shower with. Ladies and gentlemen, host of- late. You're right. Your host of Bustin' with the Boys, uh, also an NFL free agent right now, legend of a human, Will Comp. Yeah! 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 Let's go, boys. Hey, listen, give me a minute for give me a minute, Pat. All right, you go. Zito, Foxy, Diggs, all the boys behind the scenes. I know they work a lot harder than we do. Uh, Pat, I would be dumb not to thank you guys. Pat, we've had a lot of conversations with Bustin' with the boys. You've helped mentor me in a lot of ways. But I am stoked to be on here. And obviously, the guy who was hung up, who, who was hanging up in middle school, a poster, Under Armour, first round, click, in Texas clack. house. Click, clack, baby. AJ Hawk. AJ, 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 that's what I'm Thanks talking about. Thank you, good Will. Job. Hey, Will, Pat said when guests come on, they need to come hard right off the jump. So good. You came very, very hard. Right All there. right. So See, when you had that poster think? up, you didn't know that was the type of human it was, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> AJ and I have talked about you, Will, uh, off air, but I think the overwhelming resounding opinion from all of us is i wish i was on a team with you dude you seem like one of the coolest dudes of all time <laughs> that busting with the boys with taylor is a very very good show and i think from your instagram and from your conversations you have with people you have a lot of respect around locker rooms man it's a very very cool thing we're thankful you're here too so i just want to let you know that we appreciate you're here too hey that is uh that is an outstanding compliment. You know, sometimes there's a lot of the glitz and the glamour. I would have loved to have showered with you gentlemen as well. Yeah. Uh, but I do, man. I love the camaraderie. You guys know the biggest thing when guys retire, they miss the locker room the most. So I feel like I always have the perspective of knowing that it's going to end soon and to enjoy it as much as I can, like while I'm in it. How many years? What year is this next year going into? Year nine. Hey. We're free agents. Hey. What are we doing? Are we going back to Tennessee? What's going on? Are you going? By the way, congrats. Congrats. Yeah. Woo. It's Thank not you. easy to have that long of a career. Are you going back to Tennessee? You're telling Vrabes, let's go. Uh, Tannehill opened up some money for everybody, it sounds like. <laughs> you know, when uh, they made the big trade with Julio, I texted Arthur Smith right away. I said, hey, you didn't have to clear up that much cap room for your boy. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I'm a free agent, man. I'll play for anybody. Uh, of course, Tennessee, I'm living in Nashville. I'm waiting on Vrabe to text me again. Hey, are you ready to go? Or have you eaten too many ribeyes or smoked too many cigars? That's yeah. the text I got last August. But I'm ready to go, man. You know how it is. I'm staying in shape. I'm not know where I'm ranked on the old scouting list for everybody. Scouts have been trying to pin the boy down for nine years now. <laughs> I think, you know, every, for the most part, every opportunity I've gotten, I've, I've over, I've exceeded expectation and overachieved. So, hey, the boy, I'm ready to grind for whoever, man. That's awesome. You are, hey, and you mentioned uh, having Julio now. So what what is Julio going to do, you think, to that offense in Tennessee? And how, how much better is the team going to be this year compared to last? I mean, what do you think Julio is going to do? The dude is an alien. Hey. I, I hope everybody's on board with the whole alien yes. Tennessee thing. Like, they, they have superstars there now, man. They got AJ, you got Julio, you got Derrick Henry. On paper, the line, if the line stays healthy, one of the best old lines in the league. Shout out to boy Taylor Luan and Bustle with the boys, clearly. Right, yeah, but, yeah. And then you got and then you got Tannehill dishing it around everywhere. I mean, the dude can throw it. He can chuck the ball deep. He can do all the things. He can hand it off, of course. And then don't sleep on my boy Anthony Ferkser, the tight end over the middle. Everybody's going to be trying to double AJ. Who should we double? AJ, Julio, we're going to give the ball to Derek. Play action pass, Anthony Ferkser over the middle. They, they got an offense, man. You know, they're going to have to put it all together. I know... I know Vrabe is mediating and tempering all the expectation, all the hoopla surrounding it. Fortunately, I'm not in the team meeting rooms right now, so you can't dummy me in the team meetings. But I can kind of talk freely of what the Titans might be able to do, and I, I'm fired up to see what they're going to do. I'm excited for you to potentially get back into that team meeting room, and Vrabe will go, uh, big shout out to fucking Will, saying we're going to the Super Bowl, hey. all right? Big hey, shout when when Brave has me in the team meetings, man, it's uh, it's a little different. I'm definitely not this way. I'm sitting there, assholes a little tighter. Oh like, yeah, Brave, I'm sorry. I'll, you listen, I'll temper it down on the internet. 
Thankful uh, to be but, here. Thankful to be yeah. here. Love, hey, love what you got going on. <laughs> love what we're doing yeah. here. Uh, no doubt. You got to do what you got to do. Let's talk about Tannehill, though, a little bit more because you got a chance to see him both in practice, in the meeting rooms, everywhere, and on game days, especially with his meteoric rise right now in talent level, it seems like. Now, he was obviously a wide receiver in college, transitioned into a quarterback. Miami Dolphins fans say whenever he was healthy, he was good, but it was under Gase, so you didn't really know. He comes in there and has been unfucking believable Is he a guy, too? Like, off the field, whenever you guys are traveling, locker room, it seems like he is cool cool dude dude they gotta you think he's there 10 years now at this point you think Tannehill is gonna be end up being like premier guy it seems like he's on his way right now you know I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say he's a premier guy he came in he backed up uh Mariota came in and just lit the place on fire uh from my understanding he's been in the, he's gotten to be in the same offense for a long time and he's kind of just taking this thing head on he's he's a pro's pro like yes he is one of the boys but he's also one of those qbs he keeps it very professional he's got to wrench up his ass sometimes walking around the locker room uh, because you know uh, hey because you, you know you know what i mean he's he's commanding an entire offense but he is one of the boys, man. He has fun. He knows when to have fun. But for the most part, he knows how to be a pro's pro. But I, I'm a big fan of Tanny. Hey, what about Arthur Smith? You mentioned him. What's he going to be like as a head coach in Atlanta? I know, Pat, you've had him on the show before and talked to him. He seems like kind of a reserved guy. Like, what kind of leader is he? Hey, I have nothing but good things to say about Art. We joke around. We call him the head coach of Big Dick Energy because he, he would always come around before games and be like, hey, let's bring some Big Dick Energy today, boys. And we, he, would just, he would just fire us up. And then afterwards, like, say the, say the offense won a big drive, which was a lot of the time. He'd come in and be like, how about that Big Dick Energy, boys? And uh, just honestly, I'm a uh, huge no. fan of – What happened? Uh I don't know if it was uh, us or you. Zito, I think, tried to pull up a graphic and just – Don't be swiping. No, was it him or was it That's us? like an update. It was hey, but, Oh, no. An update on you. Oh, oh, well. oh, 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 kill the vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's over. Uh, you know what this is. It's not Zito's fault, by the way. No. This is technology, though. Yes. I mean, Will, what do we do? Bill Gates. Uh, no. Hey, 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 uh, go ahead, though. What are you going to say about Art? I was just going to say, hey, I, I have nothing but great things to say about Art, man. He he really is. He's a leader. He's a leader amongst men. The dude, he he's had every opportunity to be a Silver Spoon guy his entire life. When his dad's owning FedEx, he's always taken the hard road. He's one of the boys. He's one of the most genuine, real guys who will give you real feedback as a coach. And I respect that a lot about him. His dad was a Marine, I think. Whenever he came on and whenever we were first time, like the first four or five minutes, I think we were trying to figure him out, you know, during the conversation. Yeah. And then we got like, oh, this guy's a dry asshole. Okay. Yeah. He's a dry sense of humor asshole kind of like this guy. Yeah. Like, that's kind of, we we kind of got to that, I think like six minutes into it. We only had like 15 to 20 with him, but we came away after it. I think I came away much more impressed with him as a human than uh, obviously the offense is going to be incredible and everything that he's been able to do on the offense side or everything like that. But cool guy. I don't know how oh, you yeah. don't become a silver spoon guy, by the way, Will. I don't, I have the utmost respect. I don't know how you don't get comfortable. I mean, yeah. I've only tasted it for a couple years now at this point. <laughs> I have no idea how you don't become a full douchebag there. You know what I mean? No doubt, dude. And when he, it's crazy, too, because we uh, Art was on the second time on Bustle with the boys. He, we call his dad to talk about a gambling story with FedEx. Yeah. And uh, he calls his dad, and his dad answers. And before he gets on the phone, like, you know, Arthur, he, like, sits up straight. So, hey, their old man, their parents, they did it right, man. They got him in check. Um, Will, whatever you hear about this Aaron Rodgers situation, and you've been on a lot of teams, okay, over your years, obviously most notable with Tennessee Titans, but you've been around. Tannehill is a guy. What is it like when you're on a team where there is a guy playing quarterback? Me and AJ have talked about this. And then a place where it's like you don't know. Is it in a much different world? whenever you have a quarterback that is an absolute stud and do you believe alongside me and AJ like hey whatever we got to fucking do to keep this guy happy just keep him if you have a quarterback don't you feel that way or you view it differently than us well you know we're in the media game I'm a free agent right now so I can't pitch and hold myself in any situation because I'm very fond of Matt LaFleur and what they got going on <laughs> <laughs> hey hey but uh man A-Rod a is it's Aaron Rodgers, man. He's an alien as well, like Julio. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He just, yeah, it can be a run plane. He's just going to dart it out to Devontae uh, Adams. 
or Deontay. Oh man, I'm, I'm really butchering that. Yeah, name right you're not gonna now. be teammates with that guy. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, and if I get on that team, I have to come in. Hey, I apologize. So I had the you know, that's, that's on me. Yeah. yeah, that's old me. Yeah, but uh, you know, I, that, that's a great question for AJ Hawk. He played with Green Bay. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Go ahead, Todd. <laughs> Will, how hard is it to stay committed to just being in shape all the time when you don't necessarily know like what's coming next? Especially when you have the podcast on the side. Like, is that just like a lifestyle at this point? Yeah, man, it, it you know, it, it gets difficult at times, especially when you get older and, um, you know, you're on your back nine of playing ball. Uh, you know, you, you got to be a lot. You got to be self-motivated a lot just because there's times where I'll have to work out that uh, I might have to fly somewhere else and go do a thing for bussing. Um, so I think I've done a really good job compartmentalizing all of it. You know, getting into this whole industry was very uh like we can talk about the climb and the success it's had, but there's a lot of fear and anxiety with potentially thinking, hey, I might play myself out of the league with being the first NFL active player podcast where we're just kind of slinging it out there. Um, mm. But it's gotten, it's gotten, uh, it's definitely difficult. Like it has its challenges like everything else. But uh, as long as you prioritize, um, you know, I've learned a lot about organizing, scheduling things out, planning stuff ahead of time. Uh, I've definitely been on top of all that stuff with working out. It's definitely, it's gotten harder, but I love doing it, man. I love being able to juggle both and then be an example for guys that aren't necessarily superstars to kind of show or either give them the courage to, to show that, hey, you can do both things as long as you prioritize and do it the right way. Yeah, and to your point there, you know, when I had my show when I was playing, um, the, uh, <laughs> hey, yeah, my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, joking, no, I'm joking, but I was hated by our, I was hated by the people, some of the people that are making decisions because I was doing that. So like for you, I could genuinely see how you would potentially fear like, okay, if I do this, am I potentially running myself out of an opportunity because they'll say it's a distraction as opposed to anything. And when you get labeled a distraction on some people's minds, it's over. So I think the ability to balance that that you've been able to do unbelievable fucking really really you and taylor as well and and with the level of the show it's a great show and i hope you continue to get opportunities to play because i think that's a big part of why your show is so good you know because it's like hey this is somebody who's living it right now as opposed to people even me i'm like four years out i think aj is more than that it's like that's a whole different you know you have a much different view of the locker room in a much different world than even us and we're like the youngest in this thing you know what i mean so i i hope you continue to get crush it and i hope teams continue to realize that you're an asset to their team as opposed to a potential detractor you know oh i appreciate that man i i, I feel like over the last couple of years I, i've been able to kind of uh, like show that yeah and it, it was definitely like there's a the whole fear factor too like it's not like i'm like a taylor or even you like you were a pro bowl punter that decided that route still a like punter. i'm Oh, right. Still a punter. Yeah, I know you can still kick the ball. No, no, and no. But no, I'm saying, but on the team, I was still the punter, though. You know, like. For, yeah, for sure. But I'm saying, like, as somebody who year in and year out is more of a, a, a minimum guy, I've been on minimum deals. And if you, I can easily get labeled that distraction. It's like, okay, well, this guy's not worth it at all because he's not going to, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever they want to say. So there's definitely like that element to it. So I've been glad and fortunate to have been able to do it on the Raiders and uh, the Titans last year. Yeah, but I think the football guys listen to your show and they're like, yeah, we want that fucking guy in our building. You know, like, I, I, I think you're always going to, that's my immediate take from that is like, I bet that Titans locker room is fucking awesome over there. Yeah. You know, that's my immediate. Go ahead, AJ. Sorry about that. I would say, Will, do you think like the turning point for your show, like when it really the jumping off point came when you had your head coach, Mike Vrabel, say he'd cut his own meat off to win a Super Bowl as a coach? <laughs> there, there's no question that when Brave came on and said he'd cut his dick off for a Super Bowl, uh, him and when Jalen Ramsey came on and talked about how he was trash talking everybody, um, I think that's when a lot of stuff set off for us. Um, and then Jalen gave us a shout out, you know, to the media, telling, making a media guy say who we were like, OK, give them credit. If you want to bring it up, like say their name. Pat, Pat did a great job throughout that year shouting out the boys all the time. Uh, like, okay, I got you, you, got you. Hey, you guys know, you guys know it's a collective thing. Yeah, it is. Well, listen, we the amount of I mean, I'm pumped for you guys to continue to grow because this sports media is filled with. I mean, mm -hmm. there are some slap dicks out yeah. here. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are. I mean, it is a real thing. 
Um, Diggs has a question for you, but before we get to that, and by the way, COVID Cowboys, big fan of yours. You yeah. didn't shout him out earlier, but uh, kind of, oh, he did, Diggs. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm so sorry. I thought he maybe, you maybe pissed on this Cowboy. <laughs> um, you had Johnny Manziel on. Speaking about being labeled a distraction, and I, I watched some of the clips. I didn't get to listen to the entire show, but I texted you immediately, and I was like, what did you think of him? What, what was your, if you wouldn't mind, what was your full takeaway of Johnny Manziel? He's a guy that I've only been around one time, but the entire world has kind of watched that guy's life happen almost at this point since winning a Heisman at, at his freshman year or whatever the was he good guy cool guy guy you'd want to like what were your thoughts on Johnny Manziel I feel like he is one of the most interesting people in sports history at this point yeah I thought he was awesome you know there was uh, questions I wanted to ask personally to where it was like he felt because I know he's he's done a lot of interviews talking about his perspective on everything and you're right like literally everyone has gotten to watch his life kind of unfold because he was in the same breath as like a Tom Brady and a LeBron not because he played at that level at the pro level but because of what he did in college he was a household name he was Money Manziel and so I was curious how he would respond when I'm sitting there being like you know hey as an undrafted guy watching you watching this all unfold it's like you're watching a, a first rounder just swindle an opportunity where I yeah. would kill to have an opportunity like that. Or Taylor asking him, hey, do you have any regrets? Him saying no, obviously it's taken a long time for him probably to get to that spot because I can only imagine um, the mental when you come yeah. down from that peak. Oh, yeah. um, but even him saying no to Taylor and Taylor just kind of look at him and be like, that's interesting. And then kind of just leaving some dead space to where it's like, what's going to happen here? Um, I thought he handled himself very well. The perspective he has, the extreme owner, the extreme, yeah, dude, it was, uh, I was sitting there and I was like, uh, I hope that, you know, we got to get something rolling here. But uh, uh, the extreme ownership he had and all the situations he talked about, like he could have easily talked about, you know, being in a better situation, playing in Cleveland. He alluded to some things, but not not the at the expense before he just outed himself in the whole thing but i think you know it's all subjective at this point um you know who are we to think if he has does have that perspective now i hope he does because everything he said on that podcast i thought was very enlightening i was happy to see that his headspace is that way because living with regret is just oh. one of the hardest things to live with man and if it's always on your mind like you're never really going to get out of that slump, and no one's really going to save you other than yourself. And I feel like he's done that. Okay, good. I'm happy to hear that. Go ahead, Dix. Uh, well, I'm not sure if you remember this play or not, but uh, Steelers middle linebacker Bobby Spillane had to meet your teammate Derek Henry uh, in the hole at the goal line last oh, season. Oh, yeah. Being yeah. Derek's teammate, is that just the worst thing that could potentially happen to a linebacker in football? You know, this isn't going to be taken, like, the best way because I love Derek. Derek is one of the boys, and I, I love we're, – we're boys. Like, I love Derek as a friend. But watching Bobby take advantage of his opportunity in Pittsburgh as an undrafted cat who was with the Titans, he got to, we got to be in the same room. And I just got to see this kind of – this kid's passion for football and just his unwavering work ethic when things didn't go his way in OTAs and even training camp when he was actually having a good preseason with us. Um, and just seeing him be out there with the Steelers, picking Lamar Jackson off and taking him to the house – hitting Derrick Henry on the goal line uh, and watching him make plays week in and week out before he uh, unfortunately got injured. I was fired up to watch Bobby Spillane take the bull by the horns and run with that opportunity as an undrafted guy. Was that the biggest neck you've ever been around? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, he would come in. We actually played the Pittsburgh Steelers after a preseason game and I was telling Taylor, kind of laughing with him about old Bobby Spillane because he's got the best personality. And I was like, man, hey, hey, Robert, he's all fired up. He, the dude, the kid just loves football. And he comes walking on the plane after the game. There's like, hey, hey, Rob, I saw you out there and make that make that big interception. He's like, oh, yeah, man, you know, I, I love football. I'm just excited <laughs> to have the opportunity. Hey, Taylor and I just looked at each other and just started dying laughing. But I love Bobby Spillane. Oh, he's got a very good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sorry, I, I got to say that story. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know. Well, I just love football. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you need those guys. Need them. And, and by the way, you're one of those guys too. Yeah, and you. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I yeah. love football. Yeah, big. I guy. love football, Coach Rabel, uh, Lafleur, Arthur Smith, every <laughs> head coach. <laughs> yeah. uh, Will, you're the absolute man, dude. Uh, go ahead, Ty. Oh, Connor, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Will, on that same note with Derrick Henry, when you're practicing against him, is it just known like, hey, we're just going to two-hand touch this guy, no one has to tackle him, or do you just have to you know, strap it up and just go full speed and do what you can? 
No, it's pretty much known, like, hey, there's no hurting Derrick Henry out on this football field. Um, but, I mean, the dude runs hard. He's a workhorse. He, he's truly one of those guys who they don't, as a superstar like that, like the Joe Thomas, I've heard stories that he would just show up on Sundays. Derrick Henry is never hasn't been that way as of yet at all. He goes to every practice unless he actually is injured. But the dude is a workhorse. Who'd you hear? Hold on. Let's <laughs> What you just say? You heard Joe Thomas just shows up on Sunday? I understand that there's two different yeah. Dwight Freeney, towards the end of his career, he'd come out Friday for, he'd be there right. for practice, but he'd Friday, Fast Friday, he'd be a part of the walkthrough, he'd be a part of the game part of. Then there's like Robert Mathis, who he I think Robert has always believed, like, hey, I need every single rep or I'll suck out there. What did you say about Joe? You just kind of slid that in there about Joe Thomas. Just slide, yeah, yeah. slide that in there. So we had uh, Andrew Hawkins on, and we, we were talking, we were on the, uh, Joe Thomas, how they do their Tomahawk show and everything he's done with Joe. Emmy Award winner. Hawk. Emmy Award winner, Hawk. Yeah, yeah. And he was talking about how Joe, toward the back end of his career, because he played with Joe, how Joe just didn't show up until Sundays. And he would play on Sundays because his body took that much time to get ready for a Sunday game. My And, and then That's Joe awesome. came on our show. He called in. My CTE might be kicking in, but I think he confirmed <laughs> that story on our show. So he wasn't even in the building all the other days? You know how it is, Pat. He might have been in the building, but they're just laying in the training room. You go in and dap him up when you come out of the hot tub. Hey, yeah. man, I wish I had your life. Like, I ah. hope it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you're putting on the helmet and the pads, like, I'm going to go grind it out out here for a day in the cold weather. Hopefully I'll get a couple snaps this weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll see you. No um, doubt. Hey, Will, we appreciate you so much, man. Uh, Busting with the boys is fantastic. Wherever you go next, we'll be lucky to have you. And uh, thanks for joining us. Pat, I appreciate you, brother. AJ, next time you need a lot of stogie. And also, you guys need to come to Nashville. We forgot to mention that. Oh, yeah. Hey, when are we doing that? How are we doing that? Where Are you just near downtown? We just go to Broadway, put on a cowboy hat, and we're fucking there? Yeah, we'll get you some boots. It's called the 20-Minute City. You can be in Nashville. We can get anywhere. But you guys need to come in July when there's dead space with sports. We can liven it up for the people, give the people what they want. I think we can we can have some fun, have a nice little collab. You can see the new spot. It'd be an honor, I think. AJ, is that all right with you, AJ? Absolutely, man. Especially since you're going to buy a plane, I'll just hit your rug. Right. <laughs> I love that. By the way, hey, I appreciate you boys, man. <laughs> hey, which one do you love? Do you love that I'm buying a plane or that he just kind of shit on me buying a plane? Which one? Both. Is? Both. Because <laughs> Taylor will do the same thing. I'm flying Southwest. He's flying private jets. Like, you know what? When somebody's got that PJ, you take advantage. Hey, bingo. We'll see you in July, hopefully. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Compton. Yeah! We'll see you yeah! Hey, great teeth on that son of a bitch, great huh? Teeth. I said the same thing to Ty. I yeah. said, this guy's teeth are so he's, white. He's, he was the most handsome, white, bland face that was yeah. kind of <laughs> yeah. lying there for a while. What a guy. Hey, hey how's it feel? You know? Poster what? up on a wall, oh, one of the yeah. legendary guys in the league right now. Hero. You're click clack, AJ. Hull. I don't know if there was an Under Armour poster. Yeah, there was. Oh, yeah, shut dude. Up, yeah, trying was. to get every dollar. You. You took every dollar from them, uh -huh. so they yeah. had to try to make it back as much yeah. as they possibly could. They had you everywhere. They had you doing this. They had you doing that. I mean, there was. Hey, PK Subban is in Dicks. He has a huge like picture of him up at Dicks. Is he still a current player? So he's a current player. He also just signed on as an ESPN analyst for their new hockey coverage, which, by the way, we're big fans of. I thought he was somebody that they should have been marketing because he could talk. He also, by the way, not normal black hockey player. He happens to be very, very good, has a great personality. Then they kind of just, you know, passed him, you know, shoot him off. And now it's like the NHL is maybe has a little change of heart. Like, oh, this guy, good for our sport. Yeah. Oh, they're good for our sport. Okay, we want people oh. to potentially know that we exist now out here that's good news did they team him up with barry melrose do we know hey listen that guy best suit game in the biz ask about his mullet he will not respond in a positive fashion <laughs> damn it i was on a show with dan me and dan dockage i was co-hosted alongside dan dockage i think we had barry melrose on what's that we took a break when aj's internet was all messed oh, up fuck yeah why did i hang up on will then i thought we had to go Golly, that's amateur hour. <laughs> it's AJ's fault. Thanks a so. lot, AJ. I mean, you could have asked me. I knew that we had. A, we we're going to the heart out. Well, you know that because you were. You're all doped up, aren't you? Me? No. I'm, <laughs> I mean, maybe, but I mean, it's his internet got me flustered. Yeah. Well, it was great talk too. I, I'm a big fan of Will. I, I hope he gets signed. So it's Green Bay potentially. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sounds like it's Green Bay potentially. Yeah. Tennessee, Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I don't know who else. But it seems like there are some teams interested in old Will Compton.